I'm going to be looking at some Tom Waits today and quite recently several of his classic albums were remastered and reissued. There was quite a lot written about that in the press and I thought it was about time that I revisited what is perhaps my favourite Waits album, Rain Dogs. And I listened to it last week, still sounds fantastic. And I wanted to look at a track from that record which features guitar work from the great Mark Rebo. I love Mark Rebo's playing. I've not really looked at anything of his on my channel before. I spoke briefly about the clap hands solo in a video I did about my favourite alternative guitar solos. I've not looked at a proper song though, so let's put that right today. I'm going to play through a little bit of the track Jockey Full of Bourbon right now, and then I'll break it down for you. There we are. There really is some incredible guitar stuff going on in that track. I hope I did it some kind of justice in my playthrough. It's very difficult to play that kind of Mark Rebo stuff note for note, but uh, I did my best. Now, the album Rain Dogs came out in 1985, and it was the middle part of this trilogy of records that Tom Waits did on Island Records. I think he'd moved to New York from LA and he's kind of reinvented his music. First of all with Swordfish Trombones, then came Rain Dogs and then there was Frank's Wild Years which is another great record but uh, I think Rain Dogs was the record that I discovered first and it, it's for, for me uh, the masterpiece. It's the one that uh, it holds a special place in my heart. And the guitar playing of Mark Rebo features very heavily on this record but there are also lots of other great guitar players on this record. Actually Keith Richards plays on a handful of tracks and I didn't realise but uh, Robert Quine plays on a track or two as well uh, and also the great session players Chris Spedding and G.E. Smith so there's quite a stellar cast of guitar players and other musicians on this record and it's really players like Rebo and Robert Quine who are a big influence on me as a player. You know when I was a teenager when I first heard this stuff um, I, I didn't quite understand it. It was like really striking, but really kind of odd and unusual. And it, it sort of set me on a slightly different path. It sort of uh, made me less interested in you know, trying to be a virtuoso and trying to play with loads of precision and finesse. And it made me appreciate the importance of coming up with really striking parts that fitted the song and just playing with a, a bit of abandon and, and a bit of passion rather than you know, trying to make everything too kind of fussy. So let me break down how this track is played. I've kind of tried to transcribe the entire track. I'll certainly take you through the intro and the solo as close as I can note for note but I'll also talk about the verse and the chorus sections of the tune and just give you a few options as well. It's actually a really nice chord progression just to play over, to improvise over and to do your own thing with. This one's in the key of E minor and harmonically speaking it's quite simple. We've just got three chords E minor, A minor and B7 so the one, four and five chords in the key and rhythmically speaking this one has got uh, perhaps a little bit of a kind of rumba or mambo-ish feel. It's, it's not really my area of expertise so if that's uh, totally wrong I'm sure somebody will will let me know. It's definitely got that slightly Cuban vibe to it. And uh, there are three sections to the tune. There's an introduction, verse and a chorus. There's the, the solo as well but that's played over the verse chords. So let's start with the introduction. And the chords we've got for the intro are just E minor and B7. And 
over the top of that, Rebo is playing this really great melodic part, which really sets up the song nicely. The opening phrase is this. So we're starting off on, on that E minor chord, just coming down an E minor arpeggio. And then hitting this F sharp, that F sharp is the is the fifth of the B7. So with a lot of the lead guitar parts in this tune, we're dealing with all of the stuff that I'm always banging on about in my videos. So uh, triads, arpeggios, chord tones. Here he's just you know, outlining the chords. So starting on E minor, you know, hitting the, the fifth of the B7. And then we've got leading us back to the E minor. So against the, it's the fifth, this time up an octave. Descending, hitting the root of the one chord. Then the next phrase, it's got some chromatic lines here. So starting on this G, just coming down chromatically. Once again, this is chord tones. So the, the minor third uh, of E minor G coming down to the root. And then we've got hitting the chord tone of the B7 there, so starting on the C and hitting it's the flat 7 of the 5 chord and then the, the final phrase of the introduction. Oh, very simple, just, just root notes here, so the B and then open low E string. And notice how great the phrasing is here, again this is something I spoke about in a, a recent video and we've sort of got the opening phrase and then we've got an answering phrase and then the same thing really a chromatic thing we're just transposing that and then the whole intro is wrapped up with this so it really is perfectly formed but let me just put all of that together for you so you can hear how these these phrases fit together it's two three four one Moving on to the verses, and I think on the first couple of verses you can't really hear exactly what Rebo is doing, it's mixed very low to make room for the vocals, but then in the, the last couple of verses you can, can hear his parts a little bit more clearly. Uh, it's more of the same kind of ideas, so quite simple, just arpeggios, chord tones, and occasionally some stuff from the E harmonic minor scale. If you're dealing with a minor key tune which has got that, that dominant five chord, then the scale that's going to fit that is the harmonic minor scale, and Rebo makes quite a lot of use of this scale throughout this tune, so if you're not familiar with that scale it might be worth learning it. And uh, I mean the notes are E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, got that D sharp in there as well, and then we're back to E. So that, that D sharp is the crucial note, that's what's allowing this scale to fit over that dominant five chord. So it's a, it's a great sounding scale, particularly useful in these kind of minor key situations. So for the verses we're starting off on E minor, just outlining that chord. To start with you might just like to think about Think about your think about your root notes and then you can maybe find some arpeggio shapes. And then when it hits the B7. finishing off with some harmonic minor stuff there. So really I'd suggest you just play around with that. There are various places where you can find these ideas on the fretboard. Maybe start by just locating your E's and your B's, your root notes, then you can expand that to some triads and some arpeggio shapes. So loads of options here. play around with that and uh, listen to what's going on on the recording it's kind of quite easy to do your own thing in those verse sections then for the chorus it's kicking off with an A minor chord 
E minor, B7, and E minor. And the kind of strategy you can use playing over the chorus is, is very similar. I would suggest by just starting with root notes, and that's quite often what Rebo is doing. So. so just that can be very effective. And then you can you know, target maybe some other chord tones, maybe you have some of that harmonic minor stuff in there as well. So. Uh, that kind of thing i will be transcribing exactly what i'm hearing on the recording so if you want access to that tab uh, check out my patreon page let's check out the solo then one of my favorite mark rebo solos and not as noisy and out there as some of his stuff can be and actually quite a learnable solo i think if you do feel so inclined to learn the entire thing note for note you will get an awful lot out of it so let's go through this phrase by phrase as i think i've already said this is played over the verse chords so just that simple e minor to b7 chord progression and uh, i'm playing a lot of it up around the seventh fret here i should say that there are multiple options when it comes to playing a lot of these phrases various places you can play the same notes on the fretboard i'm just going with it mostly here because it sounds right to me i'm preferring the sound of the lower uh, strings it just got a slightly darker sound so I'm, I'm guessing this is where a lot of this stuff is played on the recording but but feel free to adjust some of my fingerings if uh, if it feels better for you to play it elsewhere on the fretboard but uh, the opening phrase it goes like this we've got <laughs> starting off on this B note and this E note here so it's just like an E power chord here just chord tone so the fifth to the root of the E and then we're heading to the B7 right there landing on that chord tone just like I discussed earlier the rhythm is great here too lots of syncopation so it's one two three. so it's those syncopated notes in there and uh, I'm just trying to dig in with this one. You don't want to be polite when you're playing this kind of thing. So I'm using mostly downstrokes, playing quite hard. And then next we've got this. So similar to the introduction here, we've got hitting the third of the third of the B7 and then the fifth of the B7. So I'm thinking harmonic minor here. So the E, that E harmonic minor scale, which I suppose um, some people would uh, describe that when played over the B7 as being the Phrygian dominant mode. So if you, if you want to be fancy, you can you can call it that. But personally, I don't ever think in those terms. I'm just thinking about the key center and thinking about E harmonic minor. So. And then we've got this. So going up to this high E. So again, it's that D sharp, that third of the B7. And just repeating the same note, just sort of digging in that syncopated rhythm can be really effective. And then for the second half of the solo, we've got. So more of this just E and B, just going between those notes with a bit of attitude and that nice syncopated rhythm. And here we've got some kind of chromatic stuff. I suppose you could see this as being the E blues scale here. sharp and then it's just a, a B arpeggio and then for the final phrase it's more harmonic minor stuff ending on the root of the E and just 
going up through the arpeggio. <laughs> That's taking us to the chorus, so hitting, hitting the the root there. So that's that's the final phrase. And I was kind of debating where I was going to play it on the fretboard. As I say, I like the the darker sound of playing it here, but you could uh, you could play the same thing here. equally well so up to you let me put all of that together then one two three four amazing solo as I've already said a good one I think to learn note for note particularly if you want to improve your rhythm there's so much good rhythmic stuff in there so lots of syncopation you've got those kind of lazy quarter note triplets going on as well so a really good rhythmic workout but uh, also I think this chord progression is just a really nice one to play over you could just make a loop of that E minor to B7 chord progression and try improvising some ideas of your own using these kind of materials so E minor and B major arpeggios the E harmonic minor scale the E blues scale uh, and see what you can come up with this is a, a solo I don't think Mark Rebo plays the solo the same way twice he's very much an improviser there are in fact some great live Tom Waits shows where you can hear some uh, amazing uh, solos that Rebo has done over this which are totally different from what he's done on the original recording. What gear am I using today? I hear you ask. Well I'm using my Jazz Masters. He's a reissue uh, 65 Jazz Master or, or something and I've got a Fender Princeton amp overdrive coming from the J Rocket Archer and, and that's it. Nice and simple really. Just, just really works. I love the sound of the Jazz Master into the Princeton. I'm using the, the bridge pickup today and uh, all oh, this tremolo as well. Tremolo is quite an important uh, element of this tune. I'm just using the tremolo uh, in on board the, the amp today which sounds really good. Uh, I will probably add some reverb. I mean, on the recording one of the distinctive elements of Rebo's guitar sound is the reverb. It just sounds like a some kind of room reverb. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just add some reverb in my computer when I'm mixing the audio to this video. It's something I'm sure Tom Waits would hate using kind of plug-in reverb but uh, unfortunately I don't have access to a nice sounding room reverb. There's absolutely zero reverb in my little studio so I'm gonna have to add it in the computer afterwards I'm afraid. So that is that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed putting this one together. I have transcribed the entire track so if you want that transcription, that tab, you can find that on my Patreon page. My backing track will also be up there. You can pay what you like, get access to those things, all my other archive of backing tracks. So uh, yeah, do that. Uh, you know it makes sense. And thanks very much for watching. See you next time.